Hey friends, today our listening comprehension is going to be called a gift horse. A gift horse is a folk tale. So make sure that you're actively listening and focusing on the characters as I read the story to you. Here we go. A gift horse. I am Gregorio. I was trying to grow corn on a small patch of land. I had been pulling the plow myself. My wife, Rosa, walked behind. It was hard work and the ground was rocky. We are desperate. We need to buy a horse, I admitted. But we don't have any money, Rosa pointed out. We spent our last penny on seeds for the corn. What about that sweater that you knitted, I suggested. The wool was a gift from our sheep. Perhaps if I gave it as a gift to Don Paulo, the rich, land, the rich landowner who lives on the way into town, he would give us a horse. Why would he give you anything, much less a horse, Rosa demanded. Don't be a fool. Sell my sweater and buy some kind of horse, any horse. I am the type of person who believes that people are good, even generous. Don Paulo would see what I see that I was desperate. Perhaps he would return my kindness. I wrapped up the sweater and walked to his stone mansion. It looked out over acres of green flourishing crops. What's this for? Don Paulo wondered. My wife and I want you to have it. Thank you, he said and turned away. I had no choice but to return to my miserable, dusty, rocky hillside. Rosa was furious with me. You are a fool to give something valuable to a man who has everything. I hung my head and tied myself to the plow. We went back to scraping along the rows. We had hardly made a dent in the soil. Later, we looked up to see the rich landowner riding by, his, riding by on his magnificent black stallion. He barely turned his head towards me. I hope you are happy, Rosa said bitterly. But that night we heard the snort of a horse and raced outside our hut. A white horse stood beside the landowner who handed me the reins. You were kind to me. This gift is the least I can do. We began to cry and thanked him as he marched away. Rosa praised my wisdom. Tomorrow our gift horse will do our work. Yet in the morning light, we could see that the horse was old. It had sore feet and a U-shaped back. It could not pull a plow or even carry Rosa. The landowner dumped a nag on you. Now we will have to feed it and care for it. Some gift. I fed my gift horse. I soaked its feet. My Rosa shook her head. Then one morning, we heard a strange sound. We ran outside and there were two white foals, baby horses. It was a she. The landowner was furious, but couldn't ask for them back. Their father was his great black stallion. They were worth a fortune. Now, my Rosa says, you are the smartest man I know. You give a gift, I tell her, and you get kindness in return. Now I'm going to read the story again, but this time I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts as I read. I will be doing think alouds. Here we go. A gift horse. I am Gregorio. I was trying to grow corn on a small patch of land. I had been pulling the plow myself. My wife, Rosa, walked behind. It was hard work and the ground was rocky. We are desperate. We need to buy a horse, I admitted. But we don't have any money, Rosa pointed out. We spent our last pennies on seed for the corn. What about that sweater you knitted, I suggested. The wool was a gift from our sheep. Perhaps if I gave it as a gift to Don Paulo, the rich landowner who lives on the way into town, he would give us a horse. Why would he give you anything, much less a horse, Rosa demanded. Don't be a fool. Sell my sweater and buy some kind of horse, any horse. I'm the type of person who believes that people are good, even generous. Don Paulo would see I was desperate. Perhaps he would return my kindness. I wrapped up the sweater and walked to his stone mansion. 
It looked out over acres of green, flourishing crops. What's this for? Don Paulo wondered. My wife and I wanted you to have it. Thank you, he said and turned away. So here's my think aloud. I can see that the narrator, Gregorio, has beliefs that are different from his wife's. This shows differences, differences between the two major characters in the story. Rosa doubts that people are kind, but the narrator trusts in people's generosity. This is an important part of the plot. I think this will be a part of the problem presented in the story, as well as the part of the resolution or how they solve the problem. In most folk tales, people disagree about what to do when they're trying to solve a problem. One of them usually ends up turning out being right. Let's keep reading. I had no choice but to return my miserable dusty return to my miserable dusty rocky hillside. Rosa was furious with me. You are a fool to give up something valuable to a man who has everything. I hung my head and tied myself to the plow. We went back to scraping along the rows. We hardly made a dent in the soil. Later we looked up to see the rich landowner riding by on his magnificent black stallion. He barely turned his head towards me. I hope you are happy, Rosa said bitterly. But that night we heard the snort of a horse and raced outside of our hut. A white horse stood be beside the landowner who hands me the reins. You were kind to me. This, is, this gift is the least I can do. We began to cry and thanked him as he marched away. Rosa praised my wisdom. Tomorrow our gift horse will do our work. Yet in the morning light, we could see that the horse was old. It had sore feet and a U-shaped back. It could not pull a plow or even carry Rosa. The land owner, owner dumped a nag on you. Now we will have to feed it and care for it. Some gift. I fed my gift horse. I soaked its feet. My Rosa shook her head. Then one morning we heard a strange sound. We ran outside and there were two white foals, baby horses. It was a she. The landowner was furious but couldn't ask for them back. Their father was his great black stallion. They're worth a fortune. Now, my Rosa says, you are the smartest man I know. You give a gift, I tell her, and you get kindness in return. So, as I reread the end of the story, I think about the problem and how it was solved. The narrator uses kindness to get a stranger to help him. I see that even Don Paulo tried to get rid of an old horse with lots of problems. The problem was resolved in a way that helped Gregorio and his wife. I think the author of this folktale is trying to teach the listener that being kind to people will result in good fortune. What do you think? All right, friends, that's the end of our listening comprehension today. Thank you for staying tuned.